we'll get ready for our assignment from heaven. Amen. I always look forward to sitting at the feet of Jesus. And the only way you can practically <coughs> do that is by sitting at the feet of the Word. Amen. Amen. If you open up your Bibles, if you would, to Romans chapter 11. Again. I'll ask if you would stand for the uh, reading of the Word. Romans chapter 11. By the way, as you do, quotation of the day by Matthew Henry. Grace is the free, undeserved goodness and favor of God for mankind. Amen. Amen. Grace is the free, undeserved goodness and favor of God to mankind. That's what grace is. Amen. Thank you for that. Matthew Henry. Good commentator, by the way. Romans chapter 11. We're going to look at verses 33 through 36 this morning. Romans chapter 11. 33 through 36. I'm reading from the New King James Version. This is what I normally teach from. Uh, uh, not because it's necessarily my favorite Bible, but this particular Bible has big enough print where I can see what I'm talking about. Amen. Thank God. <laughs> it does read pretty easy, though, without, without the vine and the D, uh, but we still get the point across. Romans chapter 11, verses 33 through 36, it reads as follows. It says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has become his counsel? Or who has first given to him and it shall be repaid to him? For of him and through him and to him are all things. To whom be glory forever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for today's message that you prepared in my heart for this flock, your people. I pray for your anointing to teach and preach with clarity. Let them not hear my voice, but let them hear the voice of Jesus himself. Lord, I pray that you would teach us, that you would guide us. And Holy Spirit, we thank you and confess you as the, as the teacher today. Uh, Father, I, I step aside and let you step forward. And Lord, I, we thank you for hearing from you today. We thank you that we, we are about to receive fresh manna from heaven. And I pray that you would, enter, uh, you would strengthen our inner man as we hear this word today. Increase our faith and give us grace to be doers and not just hearers only of your word. And we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> All right. Good to see everybody this morning. And uh, 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 maybe some more come in and join us a little later. But as we, we delve into today's message... Uh, I pray that God touches your heart in some areas that, that maybe uh, uh, you might have been questioning yourself, questioning uh, what's going on in my life. Uh, you see things going on around you, and, and, and all of us have some kind of crisis, some kind of issue uh, that keeps us dependent upon God. Would you agree to that? Mm -hmm. Y'all have, have some kind of thing that keeps us dependent, keeps us on our knees. And by the way, you never, you never stand taller than when you are on your knees. Amen. You see that? When you get on your knees, that's when things start turning around. And uh, I'd like to throw this one out at you, that not just it's not just when you get on your knees, but if you load your prayers up with the Word of God, you see, now you, you, you've got bullets in your gun. Yeah. <laughs> you see that? When you just shoot the blanks. Uh, uh, that's, that's, that's a little ineffective. You know, it might scare somebody to see the gun, and you shoot, it might make a noise, but if you don't have any bullets in that bad boy, you know, uh, not take care of anything, but if you'll load your gun up with bullets, uh, you'll be much more effective. The Word of God would be bullets to your prayers. Amen. Amen. Uh, whenever you find a promise from God, uh, all you have to do is meet the condition of that promise, and you have the promise. Amen. That's right. But that, that's where it takes or requires uh, study time on our own part, meditation time, if it takes devotional time. I mean, however you want to look at it, uh, whatever it is, it's really fellowshipping with God. And as we fellowship with him, we get to know him better. Now, if you get to know him better, then, then it makes it easier on your prayers because now you know his ways. You know how he operates. You see, and that kind of takes the edge off of the chaos that might be in your life when you get to know him. Uh, and you can deal with it a little better. You see that he insulates you with faith. He insulates you with joy and peace so that you'll stay out of his way while he works on your behalf. 
that's how that's how it really works. Uh, and, and I'm coming to find that out more and more as I as I walk. <coughs> You know, spending time in his word really insulates you from the chaos of the world. You remember when Jesus said this, uh, in following him, and uh, just, just throwing this out as a side, note that, that just because you follow him doesn't mean that everything is going to go right for you or everything is going to go well. Uh, however, whatever goes on, because you follow him, you'll overcome it. You'll overcome it. He says, in this world you'll have tribulation, but be of good courage, for I have overcome the world. Uh, what does that have to do with me? Well, if I'm following the one who's overcome the world and he lives in me, now what my job is is to let him learn to uh, I learn to let him live his life in and through me. Can you amen. say amen to that? Right. It makes life a lot easier. Uh, in that regard, uh, God is in control. God is in control. Uh, he was in control before you knew it. And uh, uh, if you're familiar with the uh, poem, Footprints in the Sand, uh, it came to a place where there was only one set of footprints in the sand. And that's where the, the, uh, the writer says to, to the Lord, Lord, you know, why is it that I only see one set of footprints? Where were you uh, when I was going through all of these things? Uh, and I only see one set of footprints in the sand. That's, that's me walking by myself. No, that's not you walking by yourself. That's me carrying you. That's right. You see that? Those one set of footprints is God carrying you. See, right now, God is carrying you through. Whatever it is you're going through, whether you realize it or not, my goal or my job is to help you see God and magnify Him more than your problem. Amen. That's right. So what you do is to magnify Him more than your problem. So that brings us to today's message. You might want to title this, God is in total control. God is in total control. I hope you take good notes because I got three good PowerPoints for you to take home with you. And uh, uh, prayerfully, you'll be able to improve on the information that I'm going to give you from the pulpit. Uh, later on, this information from the pulpit becomes an interactive Bible study where we can we can uh, uh, chop it up together. And I want to invite you out uh, uh, unofficially. I think you could say unofficially because we're on, on tape right now. Inviting everybody out to uh, our word journey on, on Tuesday nights from 6.30 to 8, uh, where we deal interactively with the Word of God, which will bring different translations of the Bible. And I encourage you to be rude and speak out. Uh, but we do have a bell to keep us on track. Amen. But uh, come out Tuesday night and see what that's all about. We'll have refreshments afterwards. Maybe. <laughs> you know, I, I pray. I don't want to speak too soon. But usually we have refreshments right after. And uh, I think that that makes everything go down really easy. And, and uh, you can improve on whatever we study about. Amen. Amen. You want to get that out. But God is in total control. In, in looking at our verses of scripture, I want you to look specifically at verse 36. And uh, before we read it, I want to make note of this, that not only is God behind uh, the universe, not only is God behind the created universe, but everything has its source and its fulfillment in God as well. Amen. Uh, we find that God is behind everything that, that, that we've seen. Uh, God is the creator. He's the, he's the one who's made everything. But not only that, he's also our father who cares and is concerned about our welfare and our well-being. Our beloved father. But what we're looking at today is that he's not only that, he's the source of everything. He's the fulfillment of everything. And everything comes through him. Look at this again, if you would, at verse 36. He says, For of him and through him and to him are all things. Comma. Then it says, To whom be glory forever. Amen. To whom be glory forever. Now, what I want you to notice right off the bat, if you read that, you notice that it reads kind of kind of different than the way you normally talk. Uh, it says, For of him and through him and to him are all things. See, those are 12 one syllable words. One syllable words, 12 of them. And yet, you couldn't say anything more important or profound than these words right here. You see? One more time. We're going to see this over and over again. But for of him and through him and to him are all things. Are all things. One syllable word. One syllable word. So what is Paul actually saying to us? What is he saying to us right here? We're going to jump right in and write down your first PowerPoint for today. Write this down. Everything comes from God. Everything comes through God. 
and everything comes to fulfill or fulfillment in God. Okay? Everything comes from God, everything comes through God, and everything comes to fulfillment in God. Amen, that's right. Okay? <clears throat> now, I do have to clarify something with, with, with that, that being said. Now, I say everything comes from God, but we also have in James where it says, every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights, in whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Now, what that means is, is whenever you get a good gift, know that that's from God. Amen? Now, sometimes God can give us a gift. He could give us a, 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 a curse wrapped up in a, put it like this. He gives us a blessing that's wrapped up in a curse. Mm -hmm. in, that, in that sense, uh, it comes from God. It might be a bad situation, but it could be a blessing in disguise. That's another way that we describe it, a blessing in disguise. He gives us a, a, a blessing that's wrapped up in a curse sometimes. And here's how you know when you're cursed. It's not what happens to you that matters. It's how you handle it. That's right. That's how you handle it. Proverbs 26, 2 says that there is no curse that will alight without a cause. Uh, some curses that come, a lot of times they're self-inflicted uh, when we do. And, and, and usually that comes from not obeying God, not hearing him, and not doing what he said. That brings about a curse. But because we live in a fallen world, things just happen a lot of times. Remember that? Jesus said that in this world you will have tribulation. He didn't say that you're the cause of it all the time. You're just going to have it because... This world is in a fallen state. You see, so you're going to have it. But, but of course, when you're walking with him, you know how to navigate through that kind of stuff. You navigate. He shows you how oh, he navigates you through it as you are led by it. Remember, for as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they're the sons of God. Amen. You see? So when I allow him to lead me from within, you know, although it's happening around me, you know, I have inside information. I'm able to navigate through the chaos to God's glory, to God's fulfillment. Amen. Now, when we say that everything comes from God, like I said before, I'm clarifying it, that sometimes he'll give you a blessing wrapped up in a curse. God doesn't give anybody cancer. You see that? He doesn't give anybody cancer. You might, you might have it. You might get it. You know what I mean? You can be cured or healed of it if you use the scriptures. You can be. But God didn't give that to you in the, in the sense that, that, that he's trying to bless you with the cancer. You see that? Uh, 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 the devil gives you cancer. Remember, he's the one that comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But what God does is he takes everything that you deal with and he turns it around for your good. You see? For God works all things together for your good. That's what he does. He works all things together for good. To them that are loved and are called according to his purposes. So there are conditions to be met for that to take place. See, it doesn't work to your good if you're, if you're straying away from God. Uh, you're outside of his protective care. You know, then you put yourself in danger. You're actually making yourself susceptible to the devil. Scripture says, neither give any place to the devil. Don't give him any place. See, if you let the devil ride with you, then sooner or later he'll want to drive. See, I'll let that marinate for a minute. Amen. Amen. Brother Chris. You get that peace that passes all understanding. Amen. If you stay within his sight. Amen. Amen. We looked at that last week, by the way, in a... a I might put that on YouTube myself though, on YouTube. I, I heard myself say it somewhere. <laughs> but the peace of God, the peace that passes human understanding, see, when we get that, when we receive that, when we meet the conditions of the promise to get that peace, because remember, he says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. He says to make your request known to God. See, so I, in that, in that regard, I, I disagree with the silent request or silent prayer. You need to make your request known to God for the peace that passes human understanding. And that's when, when uh, uh, God works on your behalf. So what we, we're required to do is to maintain the peace. We keep the peace. We protect the peace that keeps our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. How do we protect it? We protect it by thinking on the right things. Whatever's good, true, lovely, of good report, praiseworthy. Think on these things. When you think on those things, you're protecting the peace that keeps you out of his way so that he can work on your behalf. Amen? That's what we're doing. So God doesn't give anybody cancer. Because remember, we, we said that God, our creator, is our father also. He's our salvation. He's our father. And as any good parent, no good parent would give their children cancer to treat them or, or to teach them a lesson. If God gave you cancer, that would make him a, a child abuser. <laughs> you see that? He needs to be arrested. So that's ridiculous. You know that God didn't do that. 
It's the thief that comes, but for the kill, still and destroy. But I've come, this is what Jesus said, that you would have life and that you would have it more abundantly. He doesn't just want you to have eternal life, but he wants you to enjoy life here as well. He wants you to get the most out of life. And the only way you can get the most out of life is in companionship with him or in union with him. Can you say amen? amen. All right. So what is Paul saying to us? Paul is saying that everything comes from God, everything comes through God, and everything comes to fulfillment in God. So then uh, if that's the case, what are we looking at right here? I'm glad you asked. Uh, what this is that we're looking at in verse 36 is actually a snapshot of God's supreme so uh, sovereignty over uh, the entire universe. <coughs> this is a, just a snapshot of his supreme sovereignty <laughs> over the entire universe. Uh, so write this down. Here's your second PowerPoint. Your second PowerPoint. Number two. There's nothing in the universe that God does not control from the largest to the smallest. There's nothing in the universe that God does not control from the largest to the smallest. Now that comes with a clarification as well. Because see, uh, uh, how many of you are tired? Tired? Now, notice this. If God were in control of everything in life, that uh, it's not true because, see, God can't make you pay your tithes. You see that? He doesn't make you give. He doesn't make you be generous. So in that, in that life, man is the only creature that has to choose to be dependent upon God. Everything else just works like it's supposed to. The birds fly south for the winter because they do it by instinct. God put that in there so they're obedient to God and doing so. We got winter, spring, summer, and fall it happens normally all the time. We can expect it every day. We can expect it all throughout the year. It never changes because God is in control. He's set it in motion. He's in control. But uh, as far as human beings are concerned, we do have a will. We have a will. And we have to choose to follow God. Now, I have to go into this whenever, whenever I, I share it. Now, God doesn't work against any man's will. But what he does do to get us to change our will is he imparts knowledge to us. You see? When you have knowledge imparted to you, now you can make a clear decision. You can make better judgments because you have the right knowledge. You see that? God doesn't change your will, but when he imparts knowledge to you, you do the changing on your own. You see that? I'm glad that he does it that way. But he's in control of everything in the universe from the largest to the smallest. And I want to look at some of those things. Let's consider some of these scriptures in particular. I want to look at how God controls the stars. For instance, did you realize that God controls the stars? Yes, sir. You thought about that? Look at Psalm 147, if you would. The book of Psalm, right before Proverbs. 147. When you get there. Say, I got it. I got it. You got it? And I want you to hold your place there. Don't lose it. Psalm 147. Hold your place, and then I want you to turn to Isaiah. Isaiah 40. Isaiah chapter 40. <coughs> and look at verse 26. When you get there, say, I got that too. Got that too. Got it. Isaiah 40, 26. All right. Now back to Psalm 147, verse, verses 4 and 5. It says, he counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Isn't that powerful? It says that he counts the numbers of the stars, and he calls them all. Everybody say all. All. Oh. He calls them, not some of them, he calls them all by name. So now he comments on that. Great is our Lord, and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. Look over to Isaiah 40. Isaiah 40, verse 26, he says this from the prophet Isaiah. He says, lift up your eyes on high, and see. Who has created these things? So you're looking up and you see the stars. Who created these things? Who brings out their hosts 
by number. He's referring to the stars. He, he says, he calls them all by name, by the greatness of his might and the strength of his power, not one is missing. He kind of gives a little, a little twist to uh, what the psalmist said about the same subject. God controls the stars. Now note this, that there's no limit to God's knowledge and no limit to his understanding. You know that, right? No limit to his understanding, no limit to his knowledge. Uh, uh, there's nothing that escapes his attention. We sing the song, song that his eye is on the sparrow and I know that he watches me. We quote the verse where the hairs, the very hairs on your head are numbered. <coughs> you know, I know. Usually when we, when we read or quote that, that verse right there, we're talking about, talking about how God is concerned about the, the details of our lives, which he is. Which he is. Now that verse in context is actually talking about martyrdom. He's talking about those who will give their lives for their faith. See, now, all of us have been called to give our lives to Jesus. We give over to him. We surrender to him. Uh, but not all of us are called to, to uh, give our lives to the point of death, uh, martyrdom. That's another, another stage of development or another stage of, of your Christianity. Not everybody will, will get that call. But if you do, there will be grace to accomplish it. If you ever have to die for your faith, the grace will be there to help you do it. Amen. We help you to help you to do that. So when he talks about the very hairs on your head are numbered in the context, he says, don't be worried about what to say in that day. It will be giving you what to say. The Holy Spirit will tell you what to say when you stand before the magistrates and the authorities and things like that. Don't be afraid. He's going to give you what to say at that time. And the very hairs on your head are numbered. So don't be afraid. Basically, uh, if they tear your body apart, you're dying for your faith, don't be concerned about that. He's numbered your hairs. He'll put you back together again. Amen, that's right. You see that? All the king's horsemen and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty Dumpty together again, but God can. Amen. <laughs> Amen. He can do it because he's numbered your hairs. He's concerned about the details. He is. Thank God that he is. Amen. Some people fail to come to God in prayer because they think that, oh, he's got too many problems to deal with to, to be concerned about my little problems. You know, he's concerned about your little problems. That's right. That's you our God. That's not a bad thing at all. See, there's no limit to God's knowledge, no limit to his understanding. There's nothing that escapes his attention. Uh, uh, what I find impressing about these verses of Scripture that we just looked at is that God deals with the billions and billions upon stars, or billions upon billions of stars, individually. He deals with them individually, not just individually, but he also calls them all by name. You know, scientists, when they, when they talk about the number of stars, they never try to count how many they are. They're the ones that said that there are billions upon billions of stars, but they don't know how many they are. Psalm 147 says that he's numbered them. He knows how many there are. And not only does he know how many there are, but it says that he calls each one by name. That's amazing to me. He calls each one by name. Now here's a fact for you. Uh, 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 the movement of the stars they're so reliable and accurate that astronomers can, can, can they can compute mathematically which uh, or where each star was, was located thousands of years ago and where it'll be thousands of years from now. That's amazing. You know, sailors lost at sea. They, they don't have a compass. They use the stars to navigate by because they're correct, mathematically, mathematically correct. Well, with that being said, that leaves us with a warning then. See, let us never attribute the precision of the stars to some mindless, impersonal force or law. You see that? It's because there's a personal creator behind it all. He's the one that put it in place like that to make it mathematically correct. That's the genius and wisdom of God. That's, that's amazing to me, you see? Then what is behind it all? Here's your third and final PowerPoint for, the, for today. Uh, behind it all is the infinite wisdom of a creator whose concern extends to the remotest corners of his own universe. See that? Behind it all is the infinite wisdom of a creator whose concern, and I emphasize concern, it extends to the remotest corner of his universe. There's nowhere you can go where God is not. That's right. He's everywhere. You see that? If you were stranded on Mars, 
and you pray, God would hear your prayer on Mars and send something to get you. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I have no doubt in my mind, uh, just based off of, off of Scripture. We said before, see, God provides you with everything that you need, and everything that you need is already here. That's right. And if it's not, because we have access to the invisible realm, it's there. That's right. You see that? If it's not here in the, in the earth, since he is our creator, Father, he'll create it for you. That's right. Amen. God's going to finish what he started. He started this work. He's going to complete it. He started it in us. He's going to complete it. So, uh, uh, we're coming to a close pretty quick. But we said that he controls the stars, right? Uh, my question is, how does he control the stars? How does God control the stars. Look at Psalm 147 again. I lost my place. I think I can find it pretty quick. Psalm 147. 4 and 5 it says, He counts the number of the stars. He calls them all by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding is infinite. But verse 4 is our answer. He calls them all by name. He calls them all by name. I said that that was pretty impressive before. Let me show you why that's impressive, pretty impressive to me. In the Bible, a name expresses the essential individual character of the person or the object that's named. I'll say that again. <coughs> In the Bible, a name expresses the essential individual character of the person or object that's named. So what does that have to do with what we're talking about? So what? It's a good question that we usually ask. Well, to God, that means then, to God, not to us, but to God, everything. Uh, to God, every star, all the stars, uh, the stars are not just mere mindless confirmations of matter to be identified only by locating or location or magnitude. Each has its own name. Each star has its own name. They, they, each star is personal to him. You see? Ask any artist, you know, that made some kind of creation. It might be junk to you, but it's, it's something dear to them. Don't break it. Don't touch it. Don't spill something on it. Because it's something personal to the creator of that thing. You see that? God being our ultimate creator, the ultimate creator, he created the stars. Uh, it might be insignificant to you because you don't know its purpose. But everything has a purpose to it when God, when God has to do with it. And each star having its own name has its own purpose. So God is concerned about that star to the point that he names that star. But here's what's interesting about naming the stars. See, because it has a name that only God knows, when God calls the name of that star, it responds. You see that? It'll respond whenever God calls on it because God gave it the name. You see? So he controls it by calling it by name. Guess what? He knows your name. Right. He knows everything that you're dealing with. He knows everything that you're going through. And when he calls you, he's calling you with a plan. You see that? He's calling you with, with some destiny that he has for you. Romans 11, or actually it's, it's, it's Jeremiah uh, 11, 29. He says, well, I know the plans that I have for you, plans to give you a hope and a future. Not plans for evil, but to give you good things. You see, we've already quoted James that every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. He's not trying to inflict harm on his children. He's trying to give them a purpose and a destiny. You see, all things come from him, come through him, and are fulfilled in him. So it's only in him that we'll find fulfillment and satisfaction. Amen. It's only in him that we'll reach our destiny. Uh, next week, what we're going to look at, if the Lord uh, says the same, we're going to look at how God controls individuals. We're going to go more into depth how God controls the individual lives of people. Amen. I think the scriptures have something to say about that. Uh, so I want to pray with you right now. And, uh, uh, and after we pray, I'm going to leave room for questions and answers, okay, and comments uh, as we do. So let's pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for today's message. We thank you that, that you are in control, as the scripture said. We thank you that although you're in, you're in control of everything, Father, you uh, are in control of us as we give ourselves over to you. So I pray that everyone in earshot of my voice, that they would have the grace to give themselves over to you. I give myself to you, Lord, that you would have control over me as well. 
We, I know that you, you love me unconditionally, you love us unconditionally, and you have good plans for all of us. So I thank you for the destiny that you have for us. Uh, thank you for your son that you sent, the Lord Jesus, that we might have salvation in him. And we receive him today. We receive his spirit for power to be witnesses unto him. And Lord, we thank you for the grace to be doers of your word and not hearers only. And we thank you for confirming it with the appropriate signs and wonders to follow in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hi out there, friends and families. My name is Pastor Nyron Brewer. I pastor First Free Will Baptist Church here in Edmond, Oklahoma. We're located at 4306 Jordan Avenue, and we'd love to invite you out to come and join us. Be our guest here on Sunday morning worships at, at uh, 11 o'clock is when we start in the morning. Uh, but we also have a Tuesday night word journey at 630 till 8 o'clock. We interactively uh, discuss the Bible. We do it and have fun. And usually there are refreshments afterwards. We'd love to have you out there that we could grow together in God. And I pray that you got something from today's message. God is in total control. God is concerned about the details of our lives. And uh, he wants to do something for you. But we just have to bring ourselves to the point where we give ourselves over to it. So I'd like to pray for you. Uh, as you go your way in God, I pray that you would draw near to him so that he draws near to you. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray for my brother, my sister out there who is experiencing uh, lostness. But, Lord, we thank you that you are our shepherd, our creator, our father, who's concerned about everything that concerns us. I pray that you would meet them where they are and that you would, you would give them what they need. And I thank you, Father for getting glory out of their situation, and we give you praise for it in Jesus' name. All right, if you've received that prayer, uh, I, I thank you, uh, I thank God that he will come through for you. And uh, we'd like to see you sometime. Come out and join us, and love to meet you.